Well, I've been deep in this sleeplessness. I don't know why. Just can't get away from myself. When I get back on my feet, I'll blow this open wide and carry me home in good health. God, it's been so long away. Good afternoon and welcome to Tufts University. Welcome to the 155th baccalaureate service. The service is about to begin and first we would like you to please rise in body or in spirit and welcome the class of 2018. Thank you. Now please remain standing and turn to welcome the platform party. Members of the Tufts faculty and administration, deans, the senior baccalaureate leaders, and the Wendell Phillips speaker, the university chaplains, our provost, Deborah Kachiever, and our president, Anthony P. Monaco.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the baccalaureate service of the class of 2018. I'm Greg McGonigal, the university chaplain, and I'm delighted to welcome you into this Tufts tradition, which is a time for reflection and celebration on the eve of commencement. In baccalaureate, graduates, families, friends, and all of us at Tufts as a community are invited to collectively pause and take some time to think about the deeper meanings of the thresholds you graduates are crossing tomorrow, the years of hard work, learning, and formation that have brought you to this day, and the love and support of all those who care about you so very much, your families and friends, your teachers and advisors, all of us who are surrounding you in this place today. I invite you to be seated as we begin. Baccalaureate is a spiritual and a cultural celebration that is rooted in Tufts Universalist heritage. This year, we gather for baccalaureate at the confluence of seasons and festivals and at least three of the world's major wisdom traditions. We are in the Muslim season of Ramadan, a month of fasting and preparation that celebrates God's giving of God's teachings in the Quran. We are on the eve of Shavuos, the Jewish Harvest Festival that celebrates God's giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. And tomorrow is the Christian holiday of Pentecost, which celebrates the descent of the Holy Spirit, often referred to as holy wisdom, divine inspiration for the world. These three great traditions and others we will hear from in the words of your classmates and friends today, celebrate that teaching, learning, and the attainment of wisdom is a gift, is something valuable and sacred it transforms us as people, and it shapes us to meet the needs of the world and the needs of our own lives and communities. We live in a world in need of wisdom, from gun violence to the plight of immigrants and refugees, from persistent social and economic inequity to wars and ecological crises. All of these issues and more cry out for attention and action. They ask us to put our knowledge and compassion to use today. That has always been part of the tradition of Tufts, of learning for the sake of society and the world. As we prepared for baccalaureate this year, we asked you seniors to tell us how you hope to make the world brighter as you leave Tufts tomorrow. On your first night at Tufts, you lit a candle on the president's lawn in the illumination ceremony. And we asked you to think about how you would let your light shine here at Tufts, which you have in so many wonderful ways. Tonight, on your last night here, you're invited to return to the chapel steps again, to light a candle and think about how you will bring your light out into the world. When we asked you about how you plan to do this, you said you would do so in many different ways, by hoping and creating, sharing and making, building up people and communities, inspiring, helping, healing, engaging, sharing your smile, your strength, and your love. We gathered your responses onto the word clouds that are on the magnets on your seats. And we hope you will keep them with you as a reminder of your plans for making the world brighter. As the magnet has an invisible magnetic field that pulls toward iron, perhaps your post-college refrigerator, we hope you will remember the invisible bonds that keep you connected with Tufts, with each other and with us. In the next hour, we will draw upon and reflect on other invisible bonds that connect us our personal and social responsibilities, and the teachings of many traditions and cultures. We hope this baccalaureate offers you the opportunity to think about what your Tufts education means, how it has shaped you, and how you will use it to shape the world. The motto of Tufts is both light and peace. And we begin this time reflecting on light by sharing signs of peace with one another. And so as we begin, I would ask you to please rise as you are able and turn to those around you to express signs of peace with words, a hug, a handshake, a high five. Welcome to this time and peace be with you all. Please remain standing. 
and join us for our opening song, Morning Has Broken. Please be seated. What is the key to happiness? What's the key to happiness? Doing well in classes, graduating with a job, celebrating with friends, good celebrating all senior week. Well, those things don't hurt, but I still think that's not what will ultimately bring happiness. At this precious moment of completion, beginning, and reflections, I want to suggest something that I believe actually does make us happy. It also fills up the soul in a way that the standard markings of success or achievement rarely do. And that's cultivating a practice of gratitude. So I want to give you a small gift. It's a poem that I love. It's by a singer, songwriter, poet named Carrie Newcomer. And it's called Three Gratitudes. And here's the poem. Every night before I go to sleep, I say out loud three things that I'm grateful for. All the significant, insignificant, extraordinary, ordinary stuff of my life. It's a small practice and humble, and yet I find I sleep better holding what lightens and softens my life ever so briefly at the end of the day. Sunlight and blueberries, good dogs and wool socks, a fine rain, a good friend, fresh basil and wild phlox, my father's good health, my daughter's new job. The song that always makes me cry, always at the same part, no matter how many times I hear it. Decent coffee at the airport. And your quiet breathing, 
the stories you told me, the frost patterns on the windows, English horns and banjos, wood thrush and June bugs, the smooth, glassy calm of the morning pond, an old coat, a new friend, my library card, and that my car keeps running despite all the miles. And after three things, more often than not, I get on a roll and I just keep going. I keep naming and listing until I lie grinning, blankets pulled up to my chin, awash with wonder of the sweetness of it all. Thanks. The Wendell Phillips Memorial Scholarship is one of two prized scholarships, the other being assigned to Harvard University, which were established in 1896 in honor of Boston's great abolitionist leader. Wendell Phillips himself was a powerful and eloquent speaker considered among the foremost orators of the abolitionist movement. Throughout his life, he also organized for repeal of federal policy, marginalizing Native American communities, for universal suffrage, and for the labor movement. He devoted his life to changing hearts and challenging systems of injustice. The award is given annually to a junior or senior who has demonstrated both a noteworthy ability as a speaker and a high sense of social responsibility. Selected among a group of five shining and accomplished finalists, each with their own unique stories, Ana Del Castillo is the recipient of the 2018 Wendell Phillips Award. Anna is a Peruvian Bolivian American student from Mississippi. In her time at Tufts, a Blast Scholar and a Tufts with Rwanda Fellow. Many on campus know her as the Vice President of the Tufts Community Union, and we in the chaplaincy are proud to have Anna among our student leaders on the Interfaith Student Council. In the tradition of Wendell Phillips, Anna too is a thoughtful and perceptive organizer on campus. She counts among her most cherished accomplishments her pivotal role in the movement that successfully established Indigenous Peoples Day at Tufts. Her voice reflects an important part of the spirit of the graduating class in this historical moment, championing justice alongside the urgency of our connections to one another in mutual critical admiration. To each she brings thoughtfulness, wisdom, and hope challenging to muster, but with seeming ease. That's how one of Anna's friends described her to me. Another, that she sees the grace of God and of goodness in everyone, cultivating fully each person she meets, recognizing the love they hold, and inspiring others to care more fully as well. We've been fortunate to have Anna as a part of this community on the Hill, and as she moves forward to pursue a Master of Divinity at Harvard University next year, we can only imagine how her journey will continue to pave new roads while lifting up those around her as she travels. And so now, I'm proud to welcome to the podium to deliver the 2018 Wendell Phillips Address, Ana Del Castillo. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to acknowledge the Wampanoag people of whose lands we currently sit on. May we continue to be aware of our position on this land and support Native resistant efforts today and every day. Good afternoon, students, faculty, staff, and most importantly, members of the class of 2018. I am so incredibly honored and humbled to be delivering this year's Wendell Phillips Address. And to be completely honest, I'm very nervous. Um, in the weeks leading up to this moment, I have felt immense pressure. What words of inspiration could I possibly give to a gathering of some of the most brilliant, intelligent, and passionate individuals I have ever met? I've admired so many of you during these four years. People like Maya Pace. <laughs> you teach so many of us about self-love and what it means to care for others. 
And Lauren Laux and Zoe Miller, you somehow balance being captains of the varsity tennis team as well as all-star students and people. And Anna Francella Rodriguez, you not only take the world's best selfies, but you also care for every single blast student on this campus. And Benya Kraus, you alone spent days single-handedly putting gender-neutral bathroom signs on every single stall bathroom on this campus. And you advocate for students even when it means sacrificing your grades, social time, um, and a lot of other things. I could go on and on. It is this community and many of the people sitting in this room who have shown me radical love and critical compassion. You have taught me how to call out in order to call in and have shown me what fearless honesty looks like. Thank you for what you teach me and for all that you give to this world. So in this last moment where we're here as a complete class, I hope that we can dance and sing and celebrate all of the incredible things that we have done. This service is meant to give seniors an opportunity to share and honor reflections, meditations, and readings that have guided them. And so in that spirit, I would like to share a meditation that has guided me throughout my time at Tufts. May the grace of the Creator carry you. May you feel protected by the strength of your being. This strength has carried me through four years, four years that saw individual and collective change. In 2014, at the start of our Tufts career, Lil Johns, turned down for what, played at literally every single basement party. The great jumbo statue that now sits in front of Baloo Hall was nowhere to be found. And our beloved coffee shop, The Res, didn't yet serve cold brew on tap. It's really important, I have it every day. <laughs> Time has passed, and we, along with our society, have experienced profound change, some good and some bad. In these four years, we have mourned with our brothers and sisters around the world who faced and who continue to face exploitation at the hands of our own government. We witnessed the inauguration of a racist and xenophobic president, and on our own campus, we have felt a fierce divide as contentious issues turn friends into strangers. As seniors preparing to leave these comfortable Medford homes and off-campus houses that charge way too much for basements without washing machines, <laughs> many of us look uncomfortably at the world we inherit. A world filled with police brutality, gun violence, racial bigotry, threatened by the ever-present dangers of global warming and nuclear war. At times, these disturbing truths stop us in our tracks and cause us to ask, what can be done? I think my grandmother has an answer for all of us. This past summer, my abuela came to Mississippi to visit my family. Panchita Francisca Villafuerte del Castillo is a first-generation immigrant to the United States, one of the best marinera dancers in the world, and a living source of joy and wisdom. Towards the end of our visit, I asked my grandmother if I could record her story so that I can someday pass down the history of our family to my future children. As we sat at the kitchen table with coffee and bread, I witnessed my kitchen become a sacred space. And she began to tell me about her life in Bolivia, how poverty and economic crisis forced her to move to Peru with her four young children. She packed up everything and took her family to a new country with no job, no community, and no secure place to call home. This was a part of my family's history that I had not known until this kitchen conversation. Abuela, what did you do? I asked her, so taken aback by her bold decision to move to another country where she knew no one, had no set plan for her future. In my confusion, my grandmother looked me in the eyes and said, I survived. She used the little money she had to buy cooking supplies and sold small pasteles on the streets of Lima until she had enough money to pay for a nursing certification in Peru. With the help of the community she built, she launched a successful career as a nurse and eventually moved to the United States. Being a brown immigrant woman in this country is hard, as US immigration policies continuously strip immigrants of basic rights and human dignity. It is the way that my grandmother fought against these injustices and hardships and centered critical compassion in her life that I first learned about resistance. I come from a long legacy of strong, powerful women. Many who are sitting in the third row right here. These women teach me how to be fierce and courageous. They ignite my passion for social justice and have taught me how to be loud and take up space in order to make change. At 86, you can find my grandmother in nursing homes, teaching her friends how to dance bachata and leading cultural learning programs. As an art activist, she writes poetry about Nuestra Comunidad Latino, our radiant Latino community. Through hardships, 
she never stops fighting for the rights of others and for her right to thrive in this country so that her grandchildren, so that I can thrive and be here on this stage today. I share this story because my grandmother taught me two seemingly contradictory lessons that when combined have the power to transform the world. Resist injustice in every way possible and live with love. To live with love is to affirm those you care about in times when hatred tries so hard to prevail. To live with love is to cultivate kindness and embrace the things that unite us. To live with love is to smile at the person who serves you coffee and walk with your headphones off to listen to the sounds of nature and the human chatter that surrounds you. To live with love is not to be complacent to the injustices occurring in our world. It does mean paying attention to the proclaimed peace peaceful intentions of the United States that result in devastation, and speaking out when Congress refuses to act after mass shootings such as what happened in Parkland, Florida, and most recently Santa Fe. To live with love is to understand that appreciation and criticism are not mutually exclusive. At Tufts, we would not be doing this institution justice if we dismiss the fact that I am one of the few Latina students on this campus, or that the majority of Americans make far less than what it costs to attend this university. Who is not on this campus right now, and what faces don't you see in this crowd? Critical compassion is the way that I choose to fight against injustice, but this is by no means how everyone chooses to go about their work. I value my time at Tufts because I've been challenged and pushed by other activists who choose to advocate in different and equally powerful ways. It is the combination of all of our efforts that has made significant change on this campus and in our surrounding communities. I understand that many of us have different approaches to social justice and advocating for change, However, we are stronger and our work goes further when we choose not to isolate and shame each other, but rather celebrate and bring one another in closer. As we continue our journeys and attempt to find our place in the world, my hope is that we act on the fierce urgency of now, knowing that silence is not an option. And in times of struggle and uncertainty, I hope that we carry with us our joy moments. Moments like gaining wisdom from midnight common room conversations, laughing over shared pizza at espressos, sledding down Prez Lawn after the first snowfall, finding a group of people that make you feel seen and held, watching hundreds of candles illuminate a dark sky on our first night at Tufts. May these joy moments sustain us and push us to do better. I end with a quote from one of my favorite theologians and radical change makers, Bishop William Barber III. If you ever wonder why you were born, you were born for this season. It is our time for a moral descent to stand up against the forces of injustice. Class of 2018, may the reality of today be our call to rise up, to resist, and in each moment to live with love and gratitude. For this will carry us, this will carry the world. Thank you. The baccalaureate service is a time for appreciating and reflecting on the wisdom we have received, discovered, and engaged with in our time together at Tufts. There are many sources of this wisdom, our own direct experience, life's mysteries and wonders, and the promptings of our hearts, the words and deeds of prophetic people and communities that have challenged us to pursue justice, compassion, and love. Teachings from the world's religions and philosophies that inspire us in our spiritual and ethical life, the appreciation of beauty and the arts in its many forms, and the guidance of reason, logic, and science that counsels us to analyze, critique, and seek to understand the wonder and might of our world. We will now hear lessons of inspiration from several of the religious and philosophical traditions that are held dear among members of our class. Some will be read or recited 
in the original languages used by these communities in their practice, and the translations are printed in your program. We encourage you to consider the wisdom that they may hold for you and the sources of meaning and inspiration that you draw upon to shape your character, your vocation, and the life you hope to lead as you go forth from Tufts. Om Sahanao Vavatu, Sahanao Bunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasmina Vaditamastu, Mavid Vishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Asatoma Sadkamaya, Tamasoma Jotir Kamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Kamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Gratitude is a gracious acknowledgement of all that sustains us, a bow to our blessings, great and small, an appreciation of the moments of good fortune that sustain our life every day. We have so much to be grateful for. Gratitude is confidence in life itself. In it, we feel how the same force that pushes grass through cracks in the sidewalk invigorates our own life. Gratitude gladdens the heart. It is not sentimental, nor jealous, nor judgmental. Gratitude does not envy or compare. Gratitude receives in wonder the myriad offerings of the rain and the earth, the care that supports every single life. As gratitude grows, it gives rise to joy. We experience the courage to rejoice in our own good fortune and in the good fortune of others. As gratitude grows, so should our attentiveness to the inequities that exist in our life and in the lives of those around us. As gratitude grows, it vows to extend the privileges that we enjoy to others. I offer my gratitude to the safety and well-being I have been given, for the family and friends I have been given, for the communities I have been given, for the teachings and lessons I have been given, for the life I have been given. Among the many things that religious tradition holds in store for us is a legacy of wonder. The surest way to suppress our ability to understand the meaning of God and the importance of worship is to take things for granted. Indifference to the sublime wonder of living is the root of sin. Wonder, or radical amazement, is the chief characteristic of the religious person's attitude toward history and nature. It is not the beginning of knowledge, but an act that goes beyond knowledge. It does not come to an end when knowledge is acquired. It is an attitude that never ceases. There is no answer in the world to radical amazement. Humankind will not perish for want of information, but only for want of appreciation. The beginning of our happiness lies in the understanding that life without wonder is not worth living. What we lack is not a will to believe, but a will to wonder. Jesus said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. 
والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans. I've seen its muddy bosom and turn, turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. We invite you to rise in body or in spirit for the litany of thanksgiving and to join in the response, which is we offer our thanks and praise. For the values that a university at its best imparts, love of learning and of truth, and understanding of the unity of human knowledge and humankind, a sense of community, self-respect, and respect for others, a commitment to rationality and sanity, and an appreciation of beauty. We offer our thanks and praise for the conversations that helped us understand ourselves, that made us realize that we are not alone, that entertained and stimulated and upset us, conversations that broadened our vision and understanding, in classrooms and dorm rooms, that forced us to mature and think and grow. We offer our thanks and praise. For the images and memories of this place that will flash in our minds for the rest of our lives, walking up the memorial steps, looking out from the library roof, staying up for yet another all-nighter. We offer our thanks and praise. For the intellectual skills that a university hones and sharpens, the ability to think logically, to make sound judgments based on evidence, to solve problems by careful analysis and discussion leading to action, to develop abstract ideas and relate them to concrete reality to communicate thoughts and feelings effectively through language and symbols, and to appreciate historical and cultural context. We offer our thanks and praise. For parties and gatherings, planned and spontaneous, that brought us together. For long talks in which our hearts opened up and understanding was born. For relationships with each other, ones that lasted long, and even the ones so important at the time, which are vivid no more, yet still remembered. We offer our thanks and praise. For the willingness to doubt, which the university encourages and supports, to challenge the accepted wisdom in all fields, to examine and test whatever is encountered, to root out and question underlying assumptions, to move from conformity to creativity, to take intellectual risks. We offer our thanks and praise. For trips on planes, on buses and bikes, on foot or on the tee, that took us away from here and then brought us back. For the new places that intrigued our curiosity and for the familiar, usual places that made us comfortable. For new people, for the places we met and shared for this place on this hill. We offer our thanks and praise. For the laughter that makes our seriousness less difficult and which gives friendship new levels of joy and makes memories of friends so full of life. And for the jokes, good and bad, 
told once or repeated endlessly, which make life more whimsical and often uncover great wisdom. We offer our thanks and grace. For the, for the times when children were generous by including families in their growth and adventures. For the times when families showed their wisdom by knowing that the way to hold on to children is by letting them go. For the experiences that brought the hearts of children and families closer together in understanding and friendship. We offer our thanks and praise. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Bell. I'm the Protestant chaplain at Tufts, and it is my distinct honor to introduce our baccalaureate speaker this afternoon, Dr. Anthony P. Monaco. Dr. Monaco became the 13th president of Tufts University in 2011. An accomplished leader, scientist, and professor, Dr. Monaco brings to the Tufts presidency deep-rooted commitments to academic excellence, to diversity, access, and inclusion and to the power of higher education to impact society and transform individuals. President Monaco is deeply committed to the well-being of the campus community and chairs university-wide efforts dedicated to advancing diversity and inclusion, preventing sexual misconduct, and supporting sustainability at Tufts. He and his administrative team have rigorously supported international and immigrant students, and each of these efforts helps the Tufts community put its values and institutional commitments into practice. Under Pre President Monaco's leadership, the university has enhanced Tufts' long-standing commitments to innovation, collaboration, and civic life. President Monaco is also deeply committed to supporting student life, whether as a spectator at athletic events, a guest at religious holiday celebrations, or an attendee at the multiplicity of students' artistic performances. He participates in training sessions with members of the Tufts community, preparing for the Boston Marathon, and can often be found swimming in the Hamilton Pool or joining students for a meal in one of the dining halls. He is infamous for his Facebook birthday messages. <laughs> My birthday is June 3rd, just FYI. Before coming to Tufts, Dr. Monaco was pro-vice chancellor for planning and resources at Oxford University from 20, 2007 to 2011, where he developed and led strategic planning initiatives for academic programs, capital improvements, and budgeting and res resource allocation. A distinguished geneticist, geneticist, Dr. Monaco's doctoral research led to a landmark discovery in the genetics of muscular dystrophies. At Oxford, he led a team of scientists investigating the genetic underpinnings of such neurodevelopmental disorders as autism, specific language impairment, and dyslexia. At Tufts, President Monaco holds faculty appointments as a professor of biology in the School of Arts and Sciences and as a professor of neuroscience at Tufts University School of Medicine. A native of Willing Wilmington, Delaware, he received his undergraduate degree from Princeton University in 1981 and his MD and PhD at Harvard Medical School, where he specialized in the genetics of neurological disorders. Please, please join me in welcoming to the podium Tufts President Dr. Anthony Monaco. Good afternoon, family, friends, colleagues, and distinguished guests. It is a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. Most of all, it is a pleasure to help ce celebrate the class of 2018. <laughs> Graduation from Tufts is a milestone for all who are close to our students. A college career can bring with it unforeseen challenges as well as hope for triumphs. Those who love and care for our graduates have provided them with support and encouragement all along the way. 
rejoicing in good times, and offering a steady hand when things got rough. As we begin, I'd like to ask the graduates to stand and recognize the support, care, love, and sacrifice of the parents, grandparents, siblings, partners, children, and friends who have made this day possible. Seniors, please give them a hearty round of applause. I would also like to recognize the devotion and excellence of Tufts faculty, deans, coaches, and staff. In countless ways, visible and invisible, academic and personal, they have supported and guided our students. It is a privilege to share the stage with their representatives. I am also grateful to the students who have enriched our campus and this day with the important messages of their faiths, traditions, and philosophical perspectives and to the Reverend Greg McGonigal and his colleagues in the university chaplaincy for organizing this afternoon's celebration. Finally, thank you, Anna, for that wonderful Wendell Phillips address. You are an outstanding representative of the class of 2018, and your address was all I could have expected from someone who exemplifies the very best of Tufts. To the members of the class of 2018, this baccalaureate service is the last time you will gather together as a class. In the years since we first gathered for your matriculation in August of 2014, you have gone on to excel in your chosen pursuits with passion and creativity. The outstanding students who received this year's academic awards, presidential awards for civic life, and Alumni Association Senior Awards reflect how exceptional your accomplishments have been. I have watched you act in extraordinary plays and sing, dance, and perform with passion and brilliance. You have participated in national arts competitions ranging from dance to slam poetry. Over the last four years, the university's athletic teams have won many NESCAC championships and participated in multiple NCAA championships winning an impressive number of them. During your time on the Hill, our campus has changed. We welcomed our new jumbo, honored our very own trailblazer, Bernard Harleston, with the dedication of Harleston Hall, and Oban Click and the state-of-the-art science and engineering complex. But perhaps the most remarkable physical transformation on our campus occurred during your first year when you survived the record-breaking winter of 2014 to 15. <laughs> Fortunately, the snow piles were not permanent, although they may have felt like it at the time. You have not just been onlookers to de developments on campus, far from it. You have worked for social justice and against racism supported undocumented and international students, and requested changes in university policy. As leaders, you initiated programs such as Swipe It Forward. You have been tireless advocates on campus and in our local communities and around the world. Tomorrow, you will join the more than 110,000 members of our alumni community representing Tufts around the globe. I hope that you will cherish the friendships you have made here keep in touch with your advisors and mentors, and stay connected with the university. I know that your careers and accomplishments throughout your lifetime will give us cause for pride. You leave Tufts to enter a world that is evolving every day. Success and satisfaction in a changing environment call for flexibility. I hope you will look forward to the future with an open mind and embrace it with the same enthusiasm and passion that you brought with you to Tufts. This is not just a question of adapting to circumstances. You can never know when an experience or interaction will unlock new opportunities by encouraging you to move in an unanticipated direction. When I was not much older than you as a graduate student, I heard a talk by a young faculty member that inspired me. 
quite unexpectedly to switch my graduate research from neuroscience to human genetics was a huge risk for me personally, but it turned out to be absolutely the right decision. The work led to the discovery of the first gene for a human inherited disorder based solely on a genetic approach. And last fall, some 30 years after I started that research, the FDA approved a new therapeutic treatment based on what we had learned, the first drug, er, drug ever to treat Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I followed my gut instinct. Thank you. I followed my gut instinct about accepting a challenge, and taking that leap had an impact I could never have imagined. So I encourage you to be open about your chosen path. College is famously a time for intellectual and personal exploration, but the process of intellectual and personal exploration should never end with college. Even if you have a careful plan in mind now, be open to revising it when an opportunity to make a difference comes along. Those opportunities to make a difference in a new way won't end at 30 years old. They will come along later in life too. Again, be open to them. About a dozen years ago, after many years as a researcher, faculty member, and a center director, I had the opportunity to join the central administration at my then university. I found that I enjoyed the chance to work with colleagues from disciplines I did not know well and to bring together diverse constituencies to a common interest, and ultimately to make a difference on a bigger scale. That work eventually led me to Tufts, to the unique opportunity to work with outstanding students, faculty, and staff to make a great institution even stronger. In my work, I draw on everything I've learned over the course of my career, but in a way that I never consciously planned for or aimed at. Fortunately, you leave the Hill tomorrow with the capacity to make the advantage of wonderful opportunities that will present themselves to you. During your time at Tufts, you have gained compelling long-term skills, skills such as critical thinking, complex problem solving, written and verbal communication, and habits of mind that enable the questioning of established thought and social assumptions. These are skills that will stand the test of time and serve you and society well both today and tomorrow. And they are the same skills that employers currently say they prize highly in their employees. During your time on the Hill, you have acquired these invaluable skills through transformative learning experiences ranging from rigorous coursework, study abroad, and independent research and scholarship to energetic participation in athletics, leadership in campus activities, and service in the community. All of those experiences have strengthened your resilience, enhancing your ability to be flexible and succeed in a changing environment. These are skills that will help you navigate transitions presently and into the future. Looking ahead, we also need educated individuals who are willing to take on causes larger than their own self-interest. Active citizenship is critical to creating and maintaining an innovative workforce, a vibrant culture, and a robust civil society. In its most simple form, it means educating future leaders for positive change. As students, you have demonstrated a commitment to active citizenship through your advocacy and your service to organizations and communities close to campus and around the world. You have proven that you are willing to take on causes selflessly. As graduates, many of you are drawn to mission-oriented roles that are vital to thriving communities and advancing society. No matter what your career path you follow, I hope you will put your values, knowledge, and skills to work for the greater good. As jumbos, it is in your DNA to break molds, to lean in, and make change. The world is facing great changes and challenges, from global warming and continuing economic transformation to political instability and conflict in regions around the globe. Tufts is engaged in all these areas, and many of you will be too as you begin your careers or continue your studies. 
The complex and intertwined challenges we face require solutions that go beyond individual areas of study, public policy, or industry. If we are to work together to find innovative solutions to the big problems facing our society, it will require excellence and depth in our disciplines, active listening, recognition of differences, and finding common goals. We believe that your Tufts education has prepared you to follow your passions and tackle the challenges of our times. And that is exactly what we expect you to do. Before Charles Tufts donated 20 acres on Walnut Hill for the founding of Tufts University in 1852, he was reportedly asked what he was going to do with the hill. He replied, I will put a light on it. I hope that your experience at Tufts has been indeed a source of light. And I believe we need that light now more than ever in the face of the complex challenges our world faces. So I challenge you, the class of 2018, to make that light shine even brighter in the 21st century. Congratulations, Tufts class of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, President Monaco. I'd like everyone to rise and please join me in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. memory and the now. We are grateful for the gift of this time together, for the voices and hands of all present and those of whom we carry in our hearts. Bless these sojourners as they head in new directions and bless these families and beloveds as they walk beside them. My friends, go from this place and bring the light of this gathering to the far off corners of the world. Go from this place and tell your truth, the messy, the mucky, the joyous, and the prophetic. Go from this place knowing that you are good and knowing that you are loved. There is so much more to come of that which has yet to be. May we let no beauty go unnoticed. Amen.
led me through Told me that I was nothing without you oh, But after everything you've done I can thank you for how strong I have become You brought the flames and you put me through hell I had to learn how to fight for myself And we both know all the truth I could tell I'll just say this is I wish you farewell I hope you're somewhere